Hello, family. Shalom. It is your sister in Christ, Lady Summer, coming to you with another word from the Holy Spirit. Today is Sunday, August 13th. It is the 26th of Bob, and we are in the time of Baptism, which means judges. And the Lord woke me up this morning talking to me about standing on the word, but then he showed me how it's actually the other way around. Word is standing. The word of God stands, and the word of God is the judge. And so that is the message that I'm going to give today. The word of God stands. And the word of God is the judge. My opening scripture comes from Revelation chapter 6. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand that was verses 12 through 17 which are prophetic in themselves but i looked up that word earthquake used here in revelation 6 and it says a commotion i.e of the air gale, the wind of the ground, an earthquake. There's a tempest. It says a shaking. Then it says a storm and a whirlwind, a vibration, a bounding, an uproar, a confused noise, a fierceness, a quaking, rattling, rushing, and shaking. And I remember that this is something that actually happened to me on August 7, 2019, the day after he told me to imagine heaven, and I literally walked in heaven on the earth, and then the next day I had the day vision, and I remembered that I was born on Resurrection Sunday on Hope Street, and when I remembered that, it thundered twice and the thunders were so loud it shook the ground and I was shaken. The next scripture comes from Second Peter chapter 2 For if God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed 
with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. I'm going to stop right there. That is what my mother used to say to me all the time and to read that it's biblical. You have to be careful of what you take in because your spirit can be grieved. The things that you're looking at and listening to and speaking, do they edify your spirit or do they grieve your spirit? So Lot in his environment was having his spirit grieved by the wickedness of those unrighteous men that were dwelling around him. And it says, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Wow. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. He's not talking about this government speed system that was created. He's talking about the government of kingdom. So it says presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural rupees made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness because remember he was a prophet for profit but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet now it's really interesting that he says the dumb ass speaking with man's voice because it was a female donkey I'll prove it to you it's numbers 22 verse 27 and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. Verse 28 says, And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me? These three times. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. Now, 
was Numbers chapter 22. We're talking about Revelation 22, represents Revelation. And then it was verses 27 through 33. I'm going to go back to what Peter says now about Balaam. He says, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. Remember that word earthquake in Revelation 6 also meant tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I'm going to stop right there. And that is what I'm seeing with people who are still going to these buildings and these courts. And when I say courts, I'm talking about what they call the church building. It's not the church. We are the church. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. They are not teaching the true gospel. They are teaching another doctrine. But Peter says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. It has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That is second peter chapter 2 verses 4 through 22. so the next scripture the lord gave me is oh my god make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind as the fire burneth the wood and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. This is Psalm 83, verse 13 through 18. Because he is the most high over all the earth. The Lord is God, and God is salvation. And it is his word that stands, and it is his word that is the judge. So what is happening now is the end time battle between good and evil. And though many were called, only a few were chosen, and those chosen are doing what thus saith the Lord. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half time from the face of the tempest and see it was in 2018 specifically the date was March 23rd 2018 that the Lord told me we were in a halftime the halftime is the end part of this revelation it is him cutting the time short and it's the devil's time that is short so listen to this it says from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water 
as a flood after the woman. This is also Revelation 16. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That's all the false doctrine, all the doctrine of devils, the traditions of men. And then it says, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, all the water, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is Revelation 12, verse 13 through 17. Now the woman here in this verse, or the seed of the woman rather, is the Holy Ghost. Because it says they keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, Revelation 19 tells us what the testimony of Jesus is. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, what they've done is taken these people, just like they chose King Saul, they've taken these people and put them in the place of God, and they worship Him. This is what's happening in those buildings right now. These people have pledged their allegiance to these men and they're being loyal to this man and they're not being loyal to God. They don't have a relationship with the Lord on their own. So they're taking this man at his word and the words that he's speaking are not biblical. It sounds good to someone who doesn't know the truth. And they can say Jesus all day long, all day. Because as I just read to you, Balaam was a prophet. The Bible says that God reigns on the just and the unjust alike. You choose, you make your own choices, you have free will. And this is why Jesus told them, take heed that you be not deceived for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. He wasn't just saying they were going to say, I'm Jesus. No, he's saying, I, I am Christ. I'm, I'm a messenger of God. That's what Christ means, a messenger of God. And the time draweth near. Go you not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. So Jesus said, settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist, and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience, 
possess ye your souls. That's Luke 21, verse 8 through 19. So he gave me Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, but I'm not going to read all of it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, meaning put it on, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand, stand therefore. So when I looked up that word stand, it comes from Strong's number 2476. And it says, to stand. It says, abide, appoint. It says, literally or figuratively, abide, point, bring, continue, covenant, establish, hold up, lay, present or present, set up, stand by, stand forth, stand still, and stand up. It says to cause or make to stand, to place, to put, to set, to bid, to stand by or set up in the presence of others, in the midst, listen, before judges, stand before members of Sanhedrin, to make firm, to fix, to establish, to cause a person or a thing to keep his or her place, to stand, be kept intact, a family, a kingdom, to escape in safety, to establish a thing, to cause it to stand, to uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything that's powerful. Then it says to weigh, wow, to weigh money to one, because in very early times before the introduction of coinage, the metals were used to be weighed, to stand, stand by or near now this is really interesting right here it says to stop to stand immovable to stand firm then it says of the foundation of a building and then this is the last part continue safe and sound stand unharmed to stand ready or prepared to be of a steadfast mind of quality one who does not hesitate and does not waver. So that took me back to three days after my dream came true of the Holy Spirit, which was on Christmas, Hanukkah, and the 25th of Kislev. Three days later, the Lord said this to me, the Lord wants our worship. My life is the better after having heard the word of faith, the thing I've been teaching, I'm in. And then <laughs> I wrote this, believe and speak and line up. If you don't operate in it, it stays in you as potential. You have to operate in faith by actions. So this was the most important thing that I learned that day and at that time, when your body comes against the plan and strategy that comes against Jesus, we have to say no. Tell it no. Tell it shut up. Tell it go away. Your attitude will determine where you are and where you aren't. Help your faith or paralyze your faith. The enemy attacks your mind so that your body will follow. God will give you a faith project. He's about to give you a new thing. This is, was my message, 12-28-2016. God already knows what he's going to do about your new thing. When you are in faith, what you have sometimes you don't use. When you start, don't worry how you're going to finish. So the angel of the Lord said, believe by faith, speak by faith, 
call and pray. The last thing he said was, step up, speak up, because you have backup. You have to stay in worship. And you have to tell people about the book that God told you to write. He wants you to start that thing. Well, he knows. And I did start it. And it was that week that ended March 24, 2018, the week that, it, you know, at halftime, it was that week that I was able to, uh, I'll say, pull back the veil and see everything that had happened and how it had happened for a reason and even to see that he was there at the very beginning. Emmanuel, God with us. He's been with us. He will always be with us because he's faithful and true. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. What comes after that verse is, Behold your God, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like the shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. This is what the Holy Ghost is doing. And I'm just going to keep giving you confirmation. This is still in Isaiah 40 verse 12. Who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and met it out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, listen, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who have directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor have taught him? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workmen melted a graven image, and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast its silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he have no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? There are all these words where when I looked up earthquake and stand, all these words, foundation, way, they're in there. Is it he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth? And remember, Galilee means circle. Is it he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof 
are as grasshoppers that stretch it out the heavens as a curtain and spread it them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he shall also blow upon them. There's that tempest and that wind, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who have created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Then he says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That was verse 8 to verse 31. And so here are these wings again of eagles. But something very interesting happened to me a few months ago, the Lord started speaking to me about the queen ants having two wings. And I'm going to end the message out with that. But I said earlier, we were in the time of Shaftam, the time of Judges, and these are the scriptures that came from that. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Isaiah 30 verse 18. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. Amos 5.15. And he brings princes to naught, which is to nothing. Makes judges of the earth as emptiness. Isaiah 40.23. I just read that. And the last one that comes from this time of Shoftim, which is judges and magistrates is derived from the root word Shabbat, to judge and govern. And remember the word of God is the judge. Jesus was the word in the flesh that dwelt among us and showed us the way. It comes from Deuteronomy 16. I'm going to begin reading at verse 15. I'm going to read 15 through 22. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people 
the just judgment. I'm going to stop right there. I've said this before on previous posts that political correctness was the problem. You're not supposed to judge. You're not supposed to say anything. Let those people live. No. Israel were a set apart people, not walking in the ways of the people, living holy, living by God's standards, living by God's words. So yes, you're supposed to make righteous judgments according to the word of God. Thou shall not rest judgment. Thou shall not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shall thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set up thee any image which the Lord thy God hated. So this image that they set up of this white Jesus is graven. It's an image. And it says, neither shalt thou set thee up any image. This is by the altar, which the Lord thy God hated. The Bible is very clear that those who preach the gospel must live of the gospel. And those people who teach it are called to do this. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. If you got a man standing up there, quote unquote, preaching the word, but the Lord did not call him, didn't give him a vision, a dream, he doesn't have a testimony, he hasn't come through something, he's not able to rightly divide the word of truth, he shouldn't be up there. You definitely should not be listening. And honestly, the only one to follow is Christ. We're only supposed to be following Christ. That's why I got off all of those other social medias. And the only one that I stuck with is YouTube because it's not about followers. It's do I subscribe to this message <laughs> that they're speaking or do I not subscribe to it? Subscribing is not a following. It literally means you're in agreement to what's being said or the idea that's being proposed. You're in agreement with it. You're subscribed to it. And it also means to enter a name. You're entering your name for a publication or service. So you're a subscriber to what's being published or being put out to the public. But Jesus says, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth him, and scattereth the sheep. I'm going to stop right there. I saw where they have found here, or in the Sierra Madres, new wolves. There are wolves, they're gray wolves. And I was kind of taken aback because I had a dream some years ago where I was in this wasteland. There was trash flying everywhere. And out of nowhere, these two gray wolves came up. They looked just like what I saw in the article today. And they came up towards me and a bike appeared out of nowhere in my dream. And I got on that bike and I took off to safety. Now here's the thing, a bike in a dream represents movement, right? But all of that trash I saw at that time, the Lord gave me the interpretation that I needed to be able to disseminate or differentiate between the truth and the trash. So I noticed that when Jesus was talking to them, he would say, verily, verily. Well, verily, verily means truly, truly. Jesus' words are the truth. But I'm going to go back to scripture. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the father knoweth me even so know i the father and i lay down my life for the sheep listen and other sheep i have which are not of this fold them also i must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again no man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again this commandment have I received of my father that is John 10 18 verses and again it was 2018 that he gave me the dream of my life. All my dreams are going to come true. He's going to be with me, not to be afraid. Then I had the visitations. I had the clouds roll over the royal road. I was told I was in the halftime. I fasted for 40 days and nights. There was the earthquake, the thunders, the lightning. <laughs> he is just not been quiet since he's raised up out of his holy habitation. Psalm 68, 11 through 13 says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Kings of armies did flee apace, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. Though you have leaned among the pots, yet shall you be as the wings of the dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. So he was talking to me about the queen bee, but he also started talking to me about the queen ant because a queen ant is an adult reproducing female ant in an ant colony. And generally she will be the mother of all the other ants in that colony. And that took me to Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. And this is connected to the Holy Spirit. 
So the Lord took me to Proverbs 6, verse 6 through 11. It says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Listen, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Again, this describes someone who is the walking dead, their sleep, because they won't get it for themselves. They will not study to show themselves approved before God. Not men. Study to show thyself approved before God. In fact, let me read it. Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. Listen. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. This is what Jesus was saying. That's this is a, a hireling. A hireling is a shame and they run away. But he said, A workman that needed not to be ashamed, because you're rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's see what the next verse says. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness and their word will eat as does a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some I've always read that and the Lord told me look it up and see what it means that they thought you know, they were teaching an era that the resurrection had passed. So I said, well, that's very strange language. But let me tell you what it means. The resurrection spoken of there is a moral recovery of spiritual truth raised to life again. And then it gives another example. It says the resurrection of certain ones, history who were restored to life in Hebrews 11.35. Listen to what Hebrews 11.35 says. Women received their dead raised to life again. Thank you, Lord. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment, that they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. These things were always, judgment was always going to happen on the earth. It's happening now. Proverbs 30 verse 24 through 28 says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. So most ants you see are female. Ants have a caste system where responsibilities are divided. 
the queen is the founder of the colony and her role is to lay eggs. Worker ants are all female and this sisterhood is responsible for the harmonious operation of the colony. See, the Lord uses the ant as an example for us. That's what I said to a friend yesterday. How amazing is it to see God in all of his creation? So the worker female ants, their tasks range from caring for the queen and the young, foraging, policing conflicts in the colony, and waste disposal. Workers will most likely never have their own offspring. The vast majority of eggs develop as workers, but once the colony is ready, the queen produces the next generation of reproductives who will go on to start their own colonies. Now, this is the interesting part. A female ant's fate to become a worker or a queen is mainly determined by what she eats, not genetics. Any female ant larva can become the queen. Those that do receive diets, listen, richer in protein, meat. The other larvae receive less protein, which causes them to develop as workers. This is why the Lord told me back in 2018, eat the word, eat the word, eat the word. Now listen to this. And it is just like what happened with Jesus and Mary and her being impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Listen, unlike humans with X and Y chromosomes, an ant's sex is determined by the number of genome copies it possesses. Male ants develop from unfertilized eggs, so receive no genome from a father. This means that male ants don't have a father and cannot have sons, but they do have grandfathers and can have grandsons. Female ants, in comparison, develop from fertilized eggs and have two genome copies, one from their father and one from their mother. Then it says male ants function like flying sperm. Only having one genome copy means every one of their sperm is genetically identical to themselves and their job is over quickly, dying soon after mating. Although their sperm live on, perhaps for years, essentially their only job is to reproduce. Then it says this, queen ants can live for decades, males for a week. After establishing her colony, the queen's work is not done and she has many years of egg laying ahead of her. In the laboratory, queens have lived for nearly 30 years. Workers live for about a year, males little more than a week, although their sperm live longer. These extraordinary differences in longevity are purely due to the way their genes are switched on and off. I'll tell you this other little interesting tidbit and then I'll end this out with scripture. Ants benefit the ecosystems by dispersing seeds, pollinating plants, and improving the quality of soil. Ants might also benefit our help as a potential source of new medicines such as antibiotics. Wow. Hebrews 13.3 says, Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. When I looked at the word adversity, it says to treat ill, to oppress, which we are being oppressed, and plague. It also says, to do evil, harm, ill. This is adversity. Adversity. But to be depraved, injurious, bad. It says of bad nature, not such as it ought to be. 
of a mode of thinking, feeling, acting, base, wrong, wicked, troublesome, pernicious, destructive, baneful. Wow. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And remember, the word says that only the Lord knows the heart. Only he searches the heart. And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24, 10 through 14. Wow. It says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. This is the most rewarding that my life has ever been. And I do believe this is what it means when it says he's going to come, the saints are going to be with him, and his reward will be with him. It is rewarding to have knowledge and wisdom and understand the word, to be able to rightly divide it, to not be ashamed. It's very rewarding to know that I not only hear the voice of God, but that he hears me, that he answers me, that his word is true. That's very rewarding. Job 36, 15 says, he delivereth the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression. Ecclesiastes seven fourteen says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider. God also have set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. Wow. I'm going to end it with this last scripture because I think this pretty much wraps it up. And it's all the Holy Spirit. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore but thine eyes shall see thy teachers and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left you shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth. And it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thou cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise, and the young asses, that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which have been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and heal it the stroke of their womb. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from afar, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the mist of the neck, sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, 
and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. You shall have a song, as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart, as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lighting down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod and in every place where the grounded staff shall pass which the Lord shall lay upon him it shall be with tabrets and harps and in bottles of shaking will he fight with it for Tophet is ordained of old yea the king for the king it is prepared he have made it deep and large the pile thereof is fire and much wood the breath of the Lord like a stream of brimstone doth kindle it Isaiah 30 verse 20 through 33. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. The standing has to do with not falling. <laughs> One of the things that I always ask the Lord, Lord, keep me on my feet. Keep me on my feet. And he does that. So this is the hour that we're in right now. You have to have on the whole armor of God. And stand. And not stand on his word. It is his word that is standing. So you just need to stand with the armor on. And speak the word. And live the word. And that is how you will overcome the adversity and all of the enemies, tricks and lies, and it will continue to shorten his time. He, he has no time. He's out of time. It's not you that doesn't have time. You have all the time that the Lord gives you. It is him that has no more time. So anyway, I pray this message has blessed you. Until the next time, shalom.